Hey everyone, Brennan Snyder here. How are you? Thanks so much for joining me and welcome to what's in my 12,000 CD collection. Yes, I tend to get asked that question all the time. I've made various videos that would let you know what's in here, but I've never really gone through the whole collection. And while obviously I can't individually pull out all 12,000 CDs and show you, I am going to do my best to give you a nice broad overview of what's in this collection and we'll go around to the different CD racks and do that here. But before we start, if you're new to my channel and haven't already hit the subscribe button, please do. Also leave a comment, hit like, all those things do help support my channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus, if you turn on notifications, you're going to stay up to date on really cool videos just like this where we're talking about what's in my 12,000 CD collection. So a little bit of background. Um, I've been collecting since 1989 or at least hardcore collecting. So I've been doing this 35 years and that's how I've amassed the 12,000 CDs. At last count now, which was May 20th of 23, I had 12,355. So probably around May of this year, I'll do another count and who knows, maybe I'll be at 13,000. I've also got 366 CD box sets. So I don't count my box sets in my regular CDs. The 12,355 are the CD itself. It doesn't matter whether it is a single, a double, or a triple. It just gets counted once. Now, in terms of how I store the CDs, obviously from what you see behind me and at the intro of this video, you see that I keep them mostly out on shelves, but I've also got some in boxes. I keep them in closets. I have different places because what's actually out on the floor is only 4,500 of the 12,000 that I have. Now, I wish I had a big enough space to just have them out everywhere, but I don't, and I'm okay with that. But I'll get into a little bit about um, how and why I am okay with that. Now, generally speaking, I don't ever get rid of CDs, meaning I don't sell them. I hang on to them. I never know when I'm going to be interested in that thing again. Just because I didn't like it upon first listen doesn't mean that my taste won't change and I won't uh, grow into that. Uh, but I also don't buy albums that I don't like. So I generally check things out in advance. I listen to it. It might not blow me away, but at least I like what it is that I'm picking up. And um, I am a completist. I do like to purchase all of the albums from one artist, meaning their entire catalogs. I never do blind buys and I never buy in bulk, which just means, you know, somebody's selling their collection of 2000 CDs. I don't go buy that and just add it into my collection. Everything that I have purchased, all 12,000 of these albums here, I have purchased for one reason or another. Um, and that's at least how I've gotten to where I've gotten here. Now, the way that I do this is they're broken down by genre for me. I believe in genres. I like to have something that defines and describes an artist. If I'm in the mood for that artist or that type of music, I can go to that section and find a whole bunch of stuff that is very similar to what it is that I'm interested in. And I break it down into four genres or categories, rock, glam metal, heavy metal, and alternative. And now I do have a wide range of music. I listen to all different types of things. I do listen to the specific things that you would expect, like Black Sabbath, ACDC, obviously, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Guns N' Roses, and Metallica. But I like a lot of other things as well. And while I don't have as much from these other artists, I do have some of this stuff in my catalog, like ABBA, Neil Diamond, Tony Bennett, Bella Fleck, Vivaldi, Michael Jackson, Garth Brooks, Nine Inch Nails, Nirvana, Green Day, The Ramones, Depeche Mode, NXS, Duran Duran, and so many others. And that's just sort of, you know, the tip of the iceberg in terms of all the different stuff that I have in my collection. And one last thing to get into here before we get into actually going around and looking at all of this stuff is there are some albums that I have multiples of, but of what I own, there's a reason to have the different versions of it. And so I want to start with uh, this one here being Great White, the album Hooked. I've got five copies of this. I have the original album here, which uh, does not have, or is the uh, censored album cover. Later on, I did get a two CD edition that is the uncensored, and as I said, two CD. Uh, so there's a bonus live thing. I've also got uh, this deluxe edition that came packaged like this. You can see behind me, I've got the LP on the wall, um, and I've got a cassette version of that. And then Band like Def Leppard and Hysteria. I've got multiple copies of it. Um, I'm going to pull this out quick enough here. Uh, 
Hysteria, the single jewel case. I've also got a box set that it repeats inside here. I've got a super deluxe edition box set version of it. I've got 20th anniversary. I've got a number of different ones all adding up to six copies. And another band that has put out multiples of things, Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. I've got the standalone remastered edition. I've got a 20th anniversary edition that was remastered back when it was only 20 years old. And I've got the Immersion box set. I've also got uh, two different LP versions of it as well. So I do have some things in here, but obviously everything that is, is out and what you're seeing is not just simply duplicates of stuff. I don't keep it in terms of that. If I have a copy that I has been duplicated, I will sell that off or take it to the car, use it that way, or give it away to someone. But now that we got some of the general questions out of the way that I get asked a lot, let's go take a look at what's in my 12,000 CD collection. One of the ways that I talked about storing some of my CDs is in boxes and in my closet. And as you saw at the top of the video, I gave you kind of the overview of that and I'm show you a little bit more of it here. And it's these boxes like this that each hold 30 CDs that are in it. And this box in particular is all Scorpions or Scorpions related uh, stuff that's in here. So I have all the regular albums you would expect, but I also have some of the solo stuff like Herman Z. German, the drummer Herman Rarebell making um, a solo album that he did. Uli John Roth solo albums. This is a double live album that I have here. Um, and then just general related Scorpion stuff. I've also got this one here, Rolling Stones box, same sort of thing. This is all Rolling Stones. I don't keep my solo stuff by them, Keith Richards, Mick Jagger, and so forth. But I've got everything in here from a limited edition copy of the latest album, Hackney Diamonds, in here through deluxe editions like Sticky Fingers and so forth. But also, other types of boxes that I have are these kind, these larger boxes that I've made that I've cut down in order to store 90 CDs that are in these. Let me take the lid off of this here and you can see what's inside this. And this is a yes and yes related box. Most of it is just solo stuff. I have one of these kind of boxes that actually has all the yes stuff in it. But in this, I keep other things like the band Asia in here. I've got solo stuff by Aunt John Anderson and uh, Rick Wakeman. I've got uh, side projects from Chris, Chris Squire in here, solo stuff from Steve Howe and um, Billy Sherwood, one of the latest members of the band, uh, you name it, and some offshoot stuff from Yes. But also I have other types of boxes uh, that I will keep things in. And in this particular case, this is instrumental guitar music, a box of 90 albums like that. So again, kind of like a genre, keeping a whole section of that sort of stuff. And dividing it up like that helps me to be able to not have to have everything out on these shelves and know right where to go. I can pull a whole box out and have it. And so I've got uh, neoclassical stuff by like George Bellis in here. I've got stuff from Marty Friedman, former Megadeth guitar player. I've got stuff from Brad Gillis, who's with Night Ranger. I've even got uh, Stu Ham, bass player, so instrumental bass music in here. Former Deep Purple guitarist and Kansas guitarist Steve Morse. I absolutely love him. We got John Petrucci from Dream Theater. I got uh, former Poison guitarist Blue Saraceno in here. Got some Joe Satriani. And again, remember, I've got whole collections by these artists. So uh, these aren't just the only ones. I'm just pulling out one at a time. Andy Timmons from Danger Danger. Of course, I've got to have Steve Vai in this collection and various other things as well. All right, so in these 33 boxes I've got here, I kick off with things from Joe Lynn Turner. Then I get into Wasp. I've got Paul McCartney and Wings, Fleetwood Mac and all the solo stuff, Pink Floyd and solo stuff. We've got Dokken, Scorpions, U2, a whole David Bowie box here, Cheap Trick, Dream Theater, Loudness from Japan, Megadeth, Michael Shankar Group, a whole King's X and solo related stuff. This one here is Suicidal Tendencies, The Doors, Metallica, Bruce Springsteen, Motley Crue, Alice Cooper, Rat and Solo Stephen Piercy, Rolling Stones, White Snake, 
Sabotage, Yes, Leonard Skinner, LA Guns, Queen's Reich, Kansas, UFO, a bunch of new stuff here, and tribute projects. All right, this rack here holds 800 CDs in it. I've often called it my wall of wonder. This was the first rack I built back when I was in college. Those other ones that you've seen, uh, those were done in a recent renovation. As most of you know, I'm an architect, so uh, those newer ones are ones that I designed and had custom built for my music room. But the stuff that's in here, this is actually an overview of my whole music collection. I keep a little bit of everything in here. I've got Aerosmith, like we were listening to at the beginning of uh, this with some permanent vacation, if you were able to pick that out. I've got ACDC in here, uh, personal favorite of mine, the uh, Fly on the Wall album. I know that's not everybody's favorite. I've got uh, even some alternative rock over here, Alice in Chains. Um, Got some glam metal in this with uh, Bullet Boys and Freak Show. Uh, another favorite of mine from the glam metal years. Britney Fox can never get enough of them. I've got classic rock like Boston in here. I've also got uh, Bad Company. Uh, both uh, stuff with Paul Rogers and Brian Howe. Love this album. Um, we've got uh, Bon Jovi. We were listening to some of this at the beginning of the, the video as well. And then, uh, if I can get that back in there, I've got Southern Rock, like Blackfoot. And uh, we've got, uh, who essentially is uh, Thin Lizzy, but Black Star Riders, the band that continued on from Thin Lizzy. Uh, we've got some uh, psychedelic stuff, like uh, Captain Beyond. Love them. Continuing with uh, vocalists from Deep Purple in that lineup. I've always got stuff sitting out. The stuff that sits on tops of these is the stuff that I'm currently listening to. So I've got some Beatles thrown in here. I've also got um, Eddie Vedder's recent album, Earthling. Uh, Chris Cornell compilation of covers. And I've got some Bruce Springsteen deluxe edition albums that are out. These obviously don't fit on the wall as much as I would like. I've got... The Cure, Wish, my favorite album from them. I've got uh, Cinderella, can't ever go wrong with them. We're going to get into more of this when I get to the actual genre sections. Uh, Def Leppard, we were listening to some of them at the beginning, if I can pull that one out. The Hysteria, but the, you know, the album I actually go back to a lot more and more these days is Retroactive. I love that album a lot. I've got um, Doro Pesh from Warlock, fantastic. I've got some Dio, classic Dio, Holy Diver there. Um, I've got Duran Duran, Rio. Um, can't have a collection here without having The Doors. Love The Doors. And then um, these are ones that are LP only that I've actually burned and made my own CD copies of. Starfighters, who has a guitar player from... Um, well, he's now in ACDC. It's Angus Young's uh, cousin or nephew in the band. And Brian Johnson, his one and only solo album that he made. Uh, neither of those pressed a CD. Um, I've got some George Lynch and Reb Beach, my instrumental guitar stuff that I like so much. I've got uh, Foreigner, Agent Provocateur. Love that album. Uh, let's see. I've also got uh, some Ace Fraley in here. Trouble Walking. And Gene uh, Loves Jezebel and this great album here, Heavenly Bodies. It was the follow-up to Kiss of Life, which was just a fantastic one. Um, guys already saw that I had pulled out some Great White, but we were listening to this one at the beginning. Um, got some Peter Gabriel, Us. Let's see, got some uh, Molly Hatchet, right? Um, got some Head East. More 70s rock. Um, of course, going to have some Journey. This is their debut album. I love even that earlier prog stuff. I've got um, NXS in here. The album X, Suicide Blonde. I love that. Got me some Judas Priest, 30th anniversary edition of Turbo Lover. Um, we've got, um, let's see, got some Meatloaf in here. They never not have Meatloaf in the collection. I've got... Um, Jefferson Starship. This was such a hard one to find on CD. Winds of Change. Never been pressed uh, for like a remastered edition. I've got um, Duff McKagan solo stuff. It's 
debut solo album. And this one here, Beautiful Disease, a promo only copy of his second album. Uh, never released officially. They were just released for, um, you know, labels and people to do reviews and things like that. I've also got a bunch of Steve Miller in here. Uh, all the classic stuff from him. These are the remastered editions. I've got um, Midnight Oil. I like this album a lot here, Earth, the Sun, and the Moon. And um, I've got uh, John Mellencamp. Rough Harvest, great album that he did. Let's see, I've got uh, Ted Nugent. How can you, you got to have some Uncle Ted. Forget about all the politics, he just rocks. Um, I've got Iggy Pop. I really like this album here, done with uh, fellow Stooges member James Williamson. I've got some UFO. And I got some Derek Sherinian live with uh, Toto's drummer. And we've got uh, Offshoot from Kansas, Proto Call, featuring Carrie Livgren. And then I've got Solo, Robert Palmer. I'm getting down low, you guys can see. <laughs> So this obviously just keeps going on and on. There's uh, Tom Petty down here as well. And the collection just uh, covers a swath of everything that I like to listen to. And so I always keep this out here, but then I've got more in the other room. So let's go take a look at that. All right, so this area that I'm sitting in here, this, uh, both sides of this here are just what I consider rock. I've got separate sections for glam metal, for heavy metal, but in this area, it covers a lot of what we just talked about on the main wall, but it goes into even more stuff. Maybe the albums I'm not grabbing all the time. So again, there's still gonna be ACDC and Aerosmith and stuff like that in here. But I've also got stuff from a great metal band called Axe. You know, things that aren't in there, I've got stuff from Angel. I've got things from the Allman Brothers, and these are ones that I don't have out there. Um, we've got uh, Black Crows, if I can grab one of those really quickly. Lions is a really good album. I've got still Bon Jovi and stuff in here. I've also got uh, Randy Bachman of Bachman Turner Overdrive, and I do have Bachman Turner Overdrive. I've also got Blue Oyster Cult in the collection, More Bad Company and Blackfoot. I've got Solo Graham Bonnet from Rainbow. Uh, love that album line up. Uh, I've got Stan Bush who made the, uh, you know, famous doing the song in the Transformers soundtrack. We've even got some Michael Bolton in here. This debut Michael Bolton album is so, so good. He's not the crooner that he became later on doing all the ballads and stuff. He's rocking and rolling on that one there. I've got uh, The Buggles, Video Killed the Radio Star. Uh, go on to join Yes. And then I've got in here, uh, got Tommy Bolin and uh, Teaser Teaser. Motley Crue would eventually cover, uh, you know, the, the song Teaser. And uh, Lindsey Buckingham solo from Fleetwood Mac. I've got Jackson Brown in this collection. I've got uh, Camel, prog rock stuff like them. Um, we've got uh, Cry of Love. Remember them from like 93? Uh, the album uh, Peace Pipe and Bad Thing. Good stuff. I've got uh, Marty Balin solo albums from Jefferson Airplane and Starship. I've got uh, Dave Davies and Ray Davies of the Kinks doing solo stuff. I've also got Kinks. I've got Chicken Foot. I've got Neil Diamond in here. I've got Dire Straits. Um, I've got Doobie Brothers in the collection. I've also got Bob Dylan in this. Get behind me into some Keith Emerson and Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. We've got, of course, Eagles, can't not have Eagles. I talked about Foreigner, more Bully John Roth and Electric Sun, John Fogarty. I've got uh, Fog Hat and I've got Flying Colors, which is the band Steve Morris is a part of. Um, we've got um, Peter Frampton stuff. And even if I'm not pulling out the biggest, most famous albums, I have those in here as well. I've got Genesis, more Peter Gabriel. I've got Gin Blossoms. I've got Golden Earring. I was just on a real kick for these guys, enjoying this stuff. I've got The Gods, remember them? 
and uh, I've got uh, Humble Pie over here. I've got Colin Hay from Men at Work. We've got Don Henley in here as well uh, from the Eagle. So I've got a lot of solo and side projects and things of that nature. Sammy Hagar, um, Glenn Hughes, uh, more Billy Idol related stuff. We've got the James Gang. Love the James Gang. Joe Walsh, um, more Journey. Uh, more Jefferson Airplane and so forth. And then when we get on to this side that's over here, I've got King Crimson in the collection. We've got uh, Nils Lofgren, who's played with Neil Young. And of course, Bruce Springsteen in the E Street Band. More John Mellencamp. We've got Mike and the Mechanics. Um, Roger McGuinn of the Birds, solo stuff. Tom Petty guesting on this album. King of the Hill, such, such good stuff. Eddie Money, Moxie from Canada. I've got more Ted Nugent, Nazareth, more Night Ranger, Molly Hatchet. I got Marillion in here. Got the Outlaws, more Southern Rock. Um, Cozy Powell, one of the best drummers out there. Pink Floyd. I've got Queen, and I love these. These are the albums that are called Deep Cuts. I get tired of listening to the same old hits all the time, and I can pull those out. I've also got New Queen with Adam Lambert singing a live album. I've got a killer uh, band called Red 7 produced by Mike Rutherford of um, Genesis. I've also got Mike Rutherford's solo albums in here. Um, I've got uh, Chrissy Hine and the Pretenders, so both her solo stuff and Pretenders. I've got Paul Rogers solo. I've got Ram Jam. You guys remember them? Black Betty. Uh, Ario Speedwagon. I've got the Runaways in here. I've got Rolling Stones. Gotta have Rush in the collection. Can't not have Rush. I've got New Jersey Stars. Remember them? Fantastic band. And it just keeps going. I've got uh, stuff from The Sweet. I've got stuff from Screaming Cheetah Willies in the early 90s. Spock's Beard. Um, I've got Richie Sambora solo stuff, Strontium 90, early police, before there was the police, they were Strontium 90, I've got um, Andy Summers of the police, and then I've got Sting from the police, so I like to have, that's part of how these collections have built up, is doing both these side projects, solo albums, and, and stuff like that, I've got Bonnie Tyler, I've got Mark Stein from Vanilla Fudge, I've got offshoot spiders from mars so the band uh you know ziggy stardust and the spiders from mars well after that it was all over those guys went on and continued the name even though david bowie gave up on it i've got pat travers in here i've got more mark bolan i've got solo stuff from roger taylor of queen i've got uriah heap in the collection i've got tons and tons of white snake related stuff i've got the who who's next um, I've got a bunch of other stuff. I've got John Waite from Bad English and The Babies. And I've got uh, Steve Winwood solo stuff. And I've got ZZ Top. So let's move on to the next genre area and cover some of that. So these two shelves here, this one and the one directly next to it, are both the glam metal section. Now I've got a ton more glam metal um, in other areas, but this is sort of the creme de la creme of it here. Um, I've got some stuff from Animal Bag, Alias. I've got American Dog. I've got uh, Bonham, Jason Bonham's band. I've got a group called The Blondes. A lot of obscure glam metal, too. too. More Bullet Boys in here. Britney Fox group called The Baby. Some of these are just associated with that era, even if they don't necessarily specifically uh, sound like part of that. But uh, Blue Murder. I've got uh, Bang Tango, man. Love these guys. Um, Beautiful Creatures, which was an offshoot project from Bang Tango featuring Joe Lissette on vocals. I've got Solo Gary Sharon, simply called Sharon. I've got a band called Child's Play that a number of you guys have reached out and asked about. I've got a band called Circus of Power. I've got uh, Cats and Boots, absolutely uh, outstanding. Joe Ellis, the singer. Contraband, one of the last uh, 
you know, sort of super groups of the glam metal era featuring uh, Tracy Gunn, Cher Peterson, Bobby Blotzer of Rat. Um, you got the guy from Shark Island doing vocals and Michael Shanker. Fantastic. I've got De Priest and we've got The Malls. All right, uh, Dirty White Boy, which is features Earl Slick in the guitar position there. I've got Drama Gods, which was a side project that Nuno Betancourt did from Extreme. Uh, Dangerous Toys, uh, Dirty Shirley, which is a new project from George Lynch. Um, we've got Dante Fox, which is early Great White before they were called Great White. Um, Dead Daisies are in here. D.A.D. -D. Remember, Sleep on My Day Away. Danger, Danger. Lots of Def Leppard in here. Dogs D.M.O.R. from England. Uh, tons and tons of uh, Enough's Enough. I love that band. Um, Every Mother's Nightmare. Extreme Europe. Easy O from Japan. You guys remember them? And uh, Lita Ford, Flame, very cool, kind of rare, obscure, glam metal stuff. I've got Fast Way, I've got um, Firehouse, one of the last uh, big sort of glam metal bands. Giant, here's one from uh, Russia, Gorky Park. Got a Scottish group called Gun. More Great White, early band by Phil Collin and um, Phil Lewis. Phil Lewis of Tracy Guns, Phil Collin of Def Leppard Girl. Got some Guns N' Roses out here. Got Hardline, got Junkyard. Good stuff from them. Uh, we got Jet Boy, got Juliet, uh, Jackal. Uh, Catman Do featuring the vocalist from Fast Way before he would go on and do Flogging Molly. Got King of the Hill. And again, this stuff just kind of keeps on going. I've got Keel. I've got Kicks. If I can kind of turn myself around here to do more of this. Uh, Crocus. Uh, Michael Monroe from Hanoi Rocks. Um, got uh, Rocks Gang, man. Talk about sleaze metal. These guys, kings of it. Roxy Blue. Um, Rhino Bucket, 21 Guns featuring Scott Gorham from Thin Lizzy. Um, got Steeler featuring Ron Keel. I've got Sweet Oblivion, which is new project from Jeff Tate. I've also got a band called Smashed Gladys. Uh, original album plus a reunion album simply called Two. Band called Sweet F.A., this is Lost Tape. So these bands continue to put things out. I hit up their website. So rarity stuff coming out from some of these killer bands. I've got, um, remember Brad Sincel and War Babies? Well, before that, TKO. That's where he came from. These have been reissued on Dive Bomb Records. Uh, we got Vixen, Vane, who's getting ready to put out a brand new album. And uh, just because I mentioned them, I will show you the War Babies as well. Let's move on to heavy metal now. All right, and sort of the last area we're going to hit up here, the heavy metal section. So these two racks here cover that area. And we start off with Accept over here, get into Anthrax, Spreading the Disease, one of the best ones. I've also got uh, Armored Saint with them since John Bush sang with Anthrax. I've also got... Uh, Alcatraz, this fantastic album here that's also got Ingve Malmsteen on it, some Blaze Bailey frontman for Iron Maiden for five years. We've got Biohazard, Black Label Society, uh, Cavalier of Conspiracy, uh, Chastain, Corrosion of Conformity, remember them from the early 90s? Of course, they go back into the late 80s too. Charred Walls of the Dam featuring Tim Ripper Owens. Absolutely brutal, but killer metal. Got some Death Angel in here as well. And I've got Damn the Machine, which is a side project that Chris Poland and his brother did from Megadeth. I've got uh, more Dio in here. Andy Duris, frontman for Halloween, doing some solo uh, albums. I've got uh, Exodus. I've got even newer metal stuff like a band called Early Man that's fantastic. I've got Fate's Warning in here as well. I've got Flotsam and Jetsam 
in here. Of course, Jason Newstead going on to Metallica. I've got Gamma Ray, um, Gwar, Green Jelly, Green Jello, depending upon the name that you know I'm by, Rob Halford's solo work. I've got Halloween. I've got this cool thing here called Hansen, which uh, Kai Hansen coming from Halloween and all the different projects that he did. So a nice little compilation. Um, got some cool uh, Halloween, as I mentioned. Uh, we've got Iced Earth. We've got Kill Devil Hill. We've got James Labrie solo from Dream Theater. I've got uh, Laz Rocket, a killer um, thrash metal band from the late 80s. We've got uh, Ministry. And then over here, classic among classics, Motorhead, Ace of Spades, more Motorhead, tons of it. Some newer thrash in Municipal Waste. And then um, Metal Church in here, Yngwie Malmsteen, Nuclear Assault, Overkill. Love me some Overkill. If there was a fifth band in the big four, I think it should be Overkill. Got some Pride and Glory. Got Tim Ripper Owens, uh, front man for Judas Priest doing solo stuff. I've got classic Pantera in here, Cowboys from Hell, Triple CD Deluxe Edition. I've got Prong, Quiet Riot, uh, Quartz, uh, Ravage, another newer metal band. Uh, I've got some old stuff from the 80s, Sword, not the current, uh, I think they're a Canadian band, but uh, these original guys. Um, I've got Striper as well. And of course, Slayer. No metal collection is complete without Slayer. And thank goodness they're reuniting for a couple live shows at least. I've also got Sepultura, which is about as heavy as I go. I don't really get into the death metal. So this is about as heavy as I go. Um, I've got Tigers of Pantang in the collection. And I've got uh, Testament. Love Testament. Great album, Ritual. That was sort of their black album. I've got uh, Tool in the collection as well. I've got Udo, Uncle Slam. I've got uh, Voivod in the collection. And again, it just keeps on going and kind of wraps up with some White Zombie in there and all of the Rob Zombie solo stuff. So there you go. That's kind of the overview of uh, the collection, both hitting on the rock, the glam metal, the metal. You saw the Wall of Wonder in the 800 that had a little bit of everything. You saw how I broke it down in boxes the way that I do. And I have a bunch of those boxes of various different things uh, broken down by like a Black Sabbath box, a Deep Purple box. Um, you saw the Yes box and it just goes from there. And all in all, that all amasses into the 12 CD, 12,000 CDs that I have in this collection. And now you guys know what's in my 12,000 CD collection.